Oh yeah! Resin hardener. Mix the two together. You have 45 minutes to work with it. Art resin comes with these lids in the top and that's just so that it doesn't spill during shipping. The easiest way to get these out, cut a hole in it, stick your finger in it, pull it up. Let's go. Look how clear it is. The key to stirring art resin is one, do it long enough, and two, you want to scrape the bottoms and you want to scrape the sides because each part on its own is super sticky. And if you don't scrape the sides and the bottom, then unmixed material stays on the side and the bottom. And then when you're pouring the resin onto your actual puzzle or art or whatever you're making, and what that leaves is that leaves some sticky spots, right? Because it was on the side and it wasn't mixed. In general, we say stir for three minutes. It's just a good rule of thumb. All I do is I stir until I say to myself, that seems like about three minutes. And then I count to 30 seconds. It's foolproof. So let's talk about other resin things. Resin is very temperature sensitive. So when we talk about how long the pot life is and everything, we're talking about room temperature. If you want it to cure faster, you heat up your room. The hotter the room, the thinner the resin is. So it will self level more and the bubbles will come out easier. And opposite, the colder your room is, the thicker the resin, so it, it won't go out as far. But the bubbles have a harder time, excuse me, the bubbles have a harder time. The bubbles have a... <laughs> the bubbles will have a harder time coming out when it's cold. Okay, I'm finished with the stir stick. I'm just going like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Set it down, any extra resin that's dry on there, I can keep reusing that and reusing that. How I like to do it usually is I pour a bunch in the middle and then I kind of circle around to just put it everywhere, you know? The more you can kind of pour it out, the less spreading you're gonna have to do. You can kind of see here how the resin is moving on its own. You want it to be super thick like that. So if it could self-level all by itself, now what you're gonna do is just gonna take your spreader and you're just basically pushing it around, is what you're doing. So we're not brushing. We're pushing and just drag it all over the surface. Beautiful. And again, I'm not wearing a respirator because there's no VOCs, so you don't have to. A VOC is a volatile organic compound. And basically what that means in resin is if you were to use some filler or some cheap additives to make it look like there's more resin, those cheap things, when the chemical reaction happen, they evaporate they basically are meant to just leave. So there's shrinkage and there is stuff in the air that you don't want to be breathing in. You could make epoxy resin for very cheap and make a lot of money, but you know, you're sacrificing certain things in the quality, including yellowing and, and health. So you won't find a clear resin. I'll tell you that. It's all you can do. Just try your best and don't give up. That's all you can do. Okay, and we're almost done here, believe it or not. And the next step is everyone's favorite step. Using a torch or a heat gun to get rid of all the bubbles. This is a butane torch, it's kind of a good intro torch. It's refillable with butane. So butane is lighter fluid, the same thing that's in your lighters. Now this is my all time favorite. It's what I started with and it's what I always use. It's propane. Propane is way easier to find, it's cheaper. There's always the best tool for the job. So this torch is fantastic. You don't have to use a flint or anything. You just turn on the gas. You'll hear it, see that? And then you push the button. Now just a, just a flame like that. That's perfect. A couple things, when you're torching, think of it like ironing. With ironing, you don't hold the iron in one place, right? Don't hold the torch in one place or you'll, you'll find it burns a bit and it'll leave a little tiny little dip. Do you think you could focus on some bubbles? Okay, like right here. Again, just moving it quickly, back and forth. You know, I'm about an inch off the surface, maybe two inches off the surface. And then I'm just gonna just systematically go back and forth. This part's just so cool. Could you just see it become perfect, right? Right in front of your eyes. So torch off. The last step is we always keep a box or little containers of toothpicks around. And then we also have lights going. You look into the reflection of the light, and then you can see if there's any tiny pieces of dust or hairs, and usually there are a couple. It looks good, something here. Sometimes just a little single bubble you wanna 
coax up. I'm putting on one more gloved hand and I'm gonna just rub the sides again. Just to help there not being any, any drip lines, right? Beautiful. Okay, take this box. Look at that, beautiful. All right, so that's done. We'll let it sit overnight. Again, tomorrow it'll be hard to touch and we'll be able to see how, uh, how it looks. Okay, lights off. See you tomorrow.